Um, again, these are my disclosures. Of note, I uh, consult for uh, two manufacturers of uh, Venus stents. Uh, right now, it's important to note that there are currently no FDA approved uh, iliofemoral venous stents. Everything that's being used is technically off label. Um, there are many under uh, investigation, uh, under uh, PMA trials, and I've lifted uh, several of them uh, here. Um, and the question is, you know, why don't we have anything and why has there been this sort of rush to the marketplace now? Um, this is an excellent review uh, out of CERC that Mahmoud Razavi published uh, just over a year ago right now, which really showed that if done appropriately with appropriate sizing and appropriate placement that actually uh, iliofemoral venous stents can do actually quite well uh, with 90% primary patency in the iliofemoral segment for patients without DVT, um, approximately 80% five-year primary patency for patients with acute DVT, and approximately 70% primary patency at five years for patients with chronic DVT. Um, not to be outdone, this is a, a study from the Netherlands which showed that the actual um, uh, a pressure of the common femoral vein during ambulation uh, in patients with uh, obstruction as compared to um, without obstruction after iliofemoral venous stenting can be reduced dramatically, suggesting that lower extremity venous hypertension, the post-thrombotic syndrome, um, all of these sort of quality of life issues that we feel likely lead to venous ulcers, to, can take functional people out of work, can be mitigated uh, by uh, uh, stenting the iliofemoral segment, assuming again that there is a significant uh, outflow obstruction. Uh, and again, if you see here, for patients with significant obstruction, their uh, standing, ambulating, walking, treadmill-based femoral vein pressure can be dramatically dramatically reduced by 25 millimeters of mercury if those patients are uh, correctly stented. So uh, again, a very intriguing concept uh, to move the field forward, and that's why there's been this uh, tremendous uh, interest in central venous stents. There are numerous designs that are currently being studied. Um, uh, 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 the uh, mainstay of off-label use in this country currently is the, uh, the wall stent, uh, but we have open cell nitinol stents, the uh, Cook uh, uh, Zilver Venus stent, the Venovo stent, the Abre stent, we have a hybrid stent, uh, the sinus uh, oblique stent, which has a closed cell and open cell design, and another so-called hybrid stent, the Venity Vici uh, uh, stent. Uh, these uh, uh, devices have very unique characteristics, um, very, very different uh, physical uh, uh, properties. Uh, this is just a uh, recent publication out of a CVIR, which shows the varying changes in the radial resistive force across all these different uh, stents. Uh, interestingly enough, the sinus obliquus closed cell portion has the uh, highest radial resistive force in, in this study. Um, also, the chronic, uh, the highest chronic outward force um, at 30% of its rate of diameter uh, as well. But the um, wall stent, when it was deployed appropriately to its nominal diameter and the ends aren't fixed, seems to have the greatest level of crush resistance. Um, what do you make of this? We don't know. We still need to see the data from the prospective PMA studies. And so clearly, Clearly, there's a lot of work to be done and a lot of medical device manufacturers are sort of rushing uh, to the finish line to try and get their devices to market to try and see which is going to uh, essentially get the uh, golden ring, if you will. Um, we clearly need uh, something better than what we're currently using. Um, if we use just arterial uh, open cell stents, there's been uh, numerous, uh, not only uh, anecdotal evidence, but even prospective work that has suggested that it just doesn't have enough radial force to deal with the compression symptoms that we see in the uh, in the uh, 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 uh pelvis, um, and as you go towards a, a more crush-resistant uh, closed cell design, you get more of a cylindrical shape, which uh, appears to give more laminar flow and potentially offer better patency um, in this uh, chronically obstructed uh, uh, area. Um, we clearly want something with the appropriate radial force to deal with uh, iliac uh, vein compression syndromes. We want appropriate chronic outward force. They need to be flexible as they move throughout the pelvis, moving from the external iliac vein to the common iliac vein. We likely want them self-expandable, again, so they can be more crush resistance. We don't want them to foreshorten, which has been one of the uh, limitations of the currently available closed cell uh, designs. Uh, they need to be able to withstand uh, constant uh, twisting, for shortening, axial loading uh, from the uh, common femoral vein uh, uh, upwards. Uh, again, they need to be kink resistant. They need to be very, very long to go from the inferior vena cava all the way down, hopefully, to the distal uh, external iliac vein. And you need to be 
uh, able to sort of build them up into the iliac vein confluence. We clearly don't have this yet, which is why this is such an exciting time to be dealing with uh, deep uh, venous work. A couple of notes on the current trials, which are uh, likely going to be either be FDA approved uh, or going to be reviewed very, very soon. The Cook uh, Zilver Venus study, the Vivo IDE study, the PIs were Tony Camarota and Rusty Hoffman. This competed uh, enrollment in 2016. The Vert, uh, the uh, Venity uh, Vertis uh, stent uh, enrolled uh, 200 patients worldwide. The national PIs, Mahmoud Razavi and uh, Bill Marston. This study, interestingly enough, had a uh, intravascular ultrasound follow-up cohort at 12 months, uh, which is clearly going to give us very, very novel insights into the role of IVIS for surveillance of these cases uh, moving forward. They were able to enroll patients with both non-thrombotic disease and chronic post-thrombotic uh, 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 disease. Um, uh, acute thrombotic patients were excluded from this study, just of note. And again, this study completed in the fall of 2016 uh, as well. The BARD of uh, Venovo uh, vernacular uh, study uh, was able to enroll both uh, acute DVT, chronic DVT, and non-thrombotic DVT, um, a, a litany of uh, different sizes and uh, lengths uh, able to be studied in uh, this uh, protocol, although no IVIS uh, cohort. The global principal investigator was was uh, Michael Dake. Uh, and as typical with most of these studies, there was a, a primary endpoint of duplex patency at 12 months and obviously a freedom, uh, a safety signal, freedom from major adverse events at uh, 30 days. And that has been very typical for all of these studies moving forward. The last study, which is currently enrolling, is the Abre uh, study being sponsored by uh, Medtronic. The national, the global principal investigators are Aaron Murphy and Stephen Black. 200 patients globally uh, are uh, uh, um, uh, being uh, enrolled. They're, they're right in the middle of uh, enrollment right now. Again, the typical 30-day safety and 12-month primary uh, endpoints. Um, and uh, they will, are able to enroll uh, acute DVTs and non-thrombotic patients uh, as well. So that was just a sort of brief overview is where we currently stand in terms of the global marketplace, certainly the U.S., for uh, central iliofemoral venous stents. These designs are unique. Uh, most of the uh, stent designs being studied, if not all of them uh, uh, going to uh, FDA um, uh, panel, are of nitinol uh, 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 base. Um, they uh, range from closed cell, hybrid, and even open cell uh, slotted designs. They're designed to treat a variety of different diameters from 14 to 20 millimeters in diameter. None are currently FDA approved, and I think we are all eagerly awaiting dedicated venous stents uh, on the marketplace.